open up a tab, grab a seat, and pour a pint. It's time for the Beer Guys Radio Show. You want free beer? Go to the brewery. Dedicated to the art, science, and enjoyment of craft beer. Yeah, what's wrong with the beer we got? Now, here are your hosts, Tim Dennis and Aaron Williams. And welcome to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We are radio for the local craft beer movement, broadcasting live from the 14th annual Atlanta Cascale Tasting. We're at Five Seasons West Side. I'm Aaron Williams. And I'm Tim Dennis. We have Brian the Beard Hewitt here with us today. The Brian, how are you doing? I'm doing well. And Becky Smalls is here, but she is a working PR for us. Exactly. She's out chatting with folks. But as Aaron mentioned, we are the 14th annual Atlanta Cascale Tasting. Good times. We're going to talk here in just a minute with Owen Ogletree with Brewtopia Events, the organizer of this. We're also going to talk to a few of George's upcoming breweries. Yeah, definitely. We've got uh, Lion Creek Brewing coming up. We've got Split Batch and Banyan Roots. So That's right. A lot of good stuff coming up. And, uh, you know, last year we were three for three. We uh, did. The breweries that Everybody we that was before. on last year opened up successfully. So yeah, I hope so. to have a successful 100% record again. Let's this year. do it, man. Definitely. Let's do it. But in the meantime, uh, you know, a quick recap of what we drank, uh, what we did last week. Uh, what about yourself, Tim? Go ahead and uh, open it up. You know, so a little light week. We're running a, a quick schedule this week, but I did get a chance to stop by uh, the Terrapin Tap Room, yep. uh, the ATL Brew Lab there at SunTrust Park, and they had a coffee doppelbock on. Now, I can't remember if it was the base or the coffee version. It was called Walk and Balk. Walk and Balk was a the little, coffee one. I that's, that was the version. coffee. So yeah, a little yeah. play on their wake and bake. Yeah. It was phenomenal. Yeah, it, it was, was good. And yes. you know what? If people haven't been to the ATL Brew Lab, they're doing a ton of different styles there. They and they've got a lot of uh, they're doing English shells, they're doing a lot of, you know, classic German. They're just they're the R and D wing of Terrapins Brewery. And, so. and, and here's the cool thing that I that I found out too is that when the Braves are playing, when the when the baseball game's going on, you can actually go in, get a pint, and then come back out. That's it. And so you can have a much better variety of beers than what you have actually. And they're the cheaper. Stadium. Pro tip. Go Pro there tip, because exactly. they're cheaper that's too. It, that's so it. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So, uh, so, yeah. How about you, Aaron? What did you sip well, on? We were the same way. We went to Terra. We went to Brew Lab as well. Uh, right. Tried uh, their their milk stout. Uh, that was pretty delicious too. And uh, got to hang out at Jekyll. Uh, talk to those guys for a little bit. Uh, they've got eleven IPAs on tap that, okay. that do not hit distribution. So yeah. lots of cool stuff out there. Of course, Southern Juicy Juice. Uh, you know, lots of their IPAs. So uh, so that's that's that was my week pretty much. So yeah. So uh, you know, usually this is the time where we're talking about. Uh, Truck and Tap Beers of the Week, so beers let's get to it. Crack open a cold one. It's the Truck and Tap Beer of the Week. Woo-hoo! Craft beer and food trucks in downtown Woodstock. Truckandtap.com. The beers of this week are cask ales. Lots Everything of them. in a cask we got. So far today, I've been able to sample one. A Bananas Foster beer from uh, Three Taverns. Yep. I think it was a Terrapin that did the Tang Beyond the Galaxy Tang yes. version yes. and that, yes. so I haven't got to try a lot yet because we're we, we're working it, Aaron. We're we working it. Oh yeah, so. I guess this is works. So Owen, yes. uh, Owen's here with us. He's yep. just waiting for us to get things started. But Owen, have you got a chance to actually try many of the beers? Have you been running, getting them all set up there? Well, I've been running pretty uh, steadily, but we did, did judging this morning. That's right. Okay. Yeah, I didn't yes. get to try everything in the judging, but the judging went extremely well. People were very impressed. And I've ran around, I've tried to have an ounce of uh, probably 20 things so far, and I've been really impressed. They're, they're nice. Very good. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. The, the one-ounce pour is a good tip to have at this yeah, place because yeah. there's a lot of variety and a lot of one-off casts that uh, people don't usually get, of course. Right. And, uh, yeah, if you start doing half pours, uh, full pours, you ain't going to get through this whole list. Yeah, yeah. True. <laughs> yeah. A full pint of every one, right? So, yes, exactly. Well, Owen, we know you're busy today, and we appreciate you taking time to sit down and talk with us. Uh, but we just want to take a few minutes of your time so you can share some about ACAT, Brutopia, and your other events. So yeah. we're at the Atlanta Cascale Tasting, and it's pretty much self-explanatory, but what's this festival all about? Well, uh, this is the, my favorite way to serve beer. It's an, it's an old English way of serving it. The, the, the casks are two 10.8-gallon casks. Uh, there's no artificial carbon dioxide in here. There's no filtration. The beers are put in here near the end of fermentation with some live yeast cells and a little bit of priming sugar, a little bit of uh, uh, sugar for the yeast to feed on. And you seal it up, and the carbon dioxide that the yeast uh, ex- you know, release have, has nowhere to go. So it stays in the cask, gives you a nice sparkle. And then they settle to the bottom of the cask out of the way so the beer goes clear. And you're drinking uh, beer the way it was really meant to be served, you know, 200 years ago. You're tasting the beer instead of a mouthful of artificial carbon dioxide gas. 
and you're tasting all the fermentation products that go byproducts that go on as, as secondary fermentation happens in the cask, and it just leads to a, a really special beer. Mm-hmm. You can have a cask version of uh, Terrapin Beyond the Galaxy, and you can have you know the regular one, and they taste completely different right. because sure. of the different methods of, uh, of preparation. By the way, I, say, I will say that Owen is working very hard, but it's good to be him because he has a beer runner. I just noticed that someone that's just good. ran good handed stuff, him a beer man. and Here's ran a beer. So have that's, this. That's a good deal. So, so, so now. Oh, Owen, oh, this I think you have single handedly kept the Cascale love alive in Georgia. Fourteenth yeah. year uh-huh. of doing this and you know, we were talking, you know, with some folks earlier about fourteen years in Georgia beer, so much has changed. So what was the first event like? The first event had fifteen casts. It was at Sweetwater. Um, I bought casts for everybody, all the brewers, I took it to them. I gave them uh, tutorials on how to do it. I bought them the the, the, the seals, the spiles, the bungs, you know, the priming sugar, everything, and they did them for me. And we had them at Sweetwater, and we didn't charge for it. We just asked people to do a uh, donation to the Humane Society, and it was really fun, but it was only 15 casts. And I think that really set the standard and lit the fire under people to, uh, to realize that these are really cool beers. You know, in England, this is, this is a normal thing. You go to the pub, you drink Cascale. But here, of course, American brewers ratchet up a notch and uh, as Emerald would say and throw in extra things you know dry hops and, and vanilla and oak chips and chili bananas, peppers, and bananas and chocolate and cinnamons and, and cocos yeah. right yeah, yeah. But, but but you're right yeah I mean in traditionally in England you'd have a mild or an ESB or something that's, yeah. that's more traditional right, right. lower ABV off of a cask yeah. usually yeah. Uh-huh. now we had a gentleman with us last year I forget his name Owen but he was here from England uh to judge to help judge the Cascales. Yeah, yeah. And there was another gentleman, a beer writer from Chicago, that we talked to. Uh-huh. And those guys, they weren't as thrilled with the American interpretation of Cascales and that. Yeah, so. that's my friend Des Demore. He's a beer right. writer from uh-huh. London, yep. and he's he's a good traditionalist. He likes the um, the uh, the traditional English Cascales. He's trying to preserve them and work to uh, get people to appreciate them more. But he, he had a good time. But I think with anything though. Uh, you know, Americans, we're going to put our own spin on things. You yeah, know, it's, right, it's right. How, how do you enjoy it? And and I'll say this, talking about the way you put tang or chocolate or whatever in there, you get a nice English mild done properly on Cascale. Yeah. They're, they're sublime. Oh, it's I mean, it's really good. Yeah, they so, really are. you know, now nothing saying that you can't enjoy. I love a uh, stout with chocolate and cinnamon yeah, and peppers yeah. and all that. Uh, but both, and, you know, both are nice. Just different, uh, different angles of the same coin there. So. And a traditional English cask is not going to blow you away with intensity and flavor, but it, it will blow you away with how well made they are, and how elegant right. they are, and how subtle. And it takes a little more effort to go, wow, I'm picking up this, this, and this. Sure. In a traditional English cask versus some American cask that hit you over the head with all of these ex- explosive ingredients, which are still good, but it's just two different, completely. Well, that's we're Americans. That's what we do. That's right? what we do. I met a gentleman a couple years ago at a beer fest, and he was visiting from the UK. And he's like, "I'm over from the UK. Hit this up." Da da da. I was like, right. "Well, what do you think of American beer?" He's like, "It sucks." He said, "It's too gassy." <laughs> right. He said, "Your beer's way too gassy." He's like, "I feel so bloated yeah, yeah. after a couple beers." So uh, I was like, "Okay, fair enough. I but get I, that." I, so. I have worked hard to dispel the myth of English. Cascale is being flat and warm because right. yeah. it is not supposed to be flat and warm. It's supposed to have a nice sparkle, very soft, nice carbonation, and it's supposed to be served at 50 degrees, you yeah. know, cellar temperature, which is the perfect temperature to really enjoy a nice beer. Something that's sessionable, something you can drink three, four pints of and not, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. go crazy with, and that's, uh, yeah, that's and just I, a classic. And I was so it. impressed this year. We got a lot of classic English styles entered by American brewers. Good. Very cool. Who are going back. The pendulum is swinging that way. And, I, I uh, noticed a couple of ESPs, yeah, and I noticed yeah. some other ones. That's right. great, yeah. Oh, and if people want to find out more about what you've got coming up, what's the best way for them to do that? Just go to my website, brewtopia.info. Excellent. Oh, and thanks so much for joining us. Congrats on the 14th Annual Festival here. Cool. Thank you very much. It's good to have you guys here. Thank Thank you. you so much. You're listening to Beer Guys Radio. We need to take a quick break, but we'll be back in just a few minutes to talk to some of Georgia's upcoming breweries. Have you ever thought about owning your own brewery but don't know what it takes to get one built? 
We're CRL Contracting, and we build breweries. We are the most experienced contractors in the state of Georgia when it comes to building new breweries and tap rooms or expanding current breweries. If you've been to Orpheus, Second Self, or Scofflaw, then you know what kind of work we can do. Just give us a call at 678-546-3382 or visit crlcontracting.com for more information. CRL Contracting. We build breweries. crlcontracting.com. Follow the Beer Guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Next Friday is Hawaiian Shirt Day. So, you know, if you want to, go ahead and uh, wear a Hawaiian shirt and jeans. Now, back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. And welcome back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. BeerGuysRadio.com is our website. We are live at the Atlanta Cascale Tasting at Five Seasons Westside in Atlanta, talking today with a bunch of brewers in the planning. Up and coming. Or coming soon. That's uh, keeping our tradition at yep. Atlanta Cascale Tasting alive. We're talking to some new breweries coming to Georgia this year. We talked to a few last year. And, guys, we said it's good mojo to be on here with us because all three we talked to last year opened you know, on schedule or close to schedule last yeah, exactly. year. So that's yeah. it. But right now we are talking to Lime Creek Brewing out of Peachtree City, and we have Paul Costick and Jason Carroll here with us today, guys. Yes, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having us, Chris. Thanks for having us. So now, so guys, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, your background. Now, uh, Jason, yeah. you uh, come from Ireland. Yes, How did indeed, you connect yeah. up with the Lime Creek crew, and uh, why uh, make the journey down here to the, to the United States? Yeah, well, I, I, I kind of got into brewing many, many years ago as a home brewer. As much of us do, um, and kind of did quite well, and you know, got a professional role in a couple of breweries and some awards and all that kind of stuff. And you know, I absolutely fell in love with the American style of brewing, and I was, you know, I, I wanted to make sure I was mature enough and I had the right experience before I made a potential leap over here. Um, and I just felt like the time was right, so I reached out on pro brew or yeah, pro brewer at the time, um, and got talking to Paul. Um, after a couple of months, came over to Peachtree City, had a visit, went to Asheville, which was awesome as well. Um, and yeah, here we are. I'm here since October. Sounds like he buttered you up when you came in trying to get <laughs> you go up to Asheville, trip around Atlanta, do it upright. This is what we got here. That's pretty Welcome. much what happened. So, yeah. yeah. Pretty much you know, I said uh, we talked a little bit before we got on the air about mm-hmm. Galway Bay. Oh, okay. And I think we're doing a uh, trade program here because the brewer at Galway Bay, the head brewer there, is from Kennesaw, Will, Georgia. Right? Will. Yeah, Will. Yeah. Yeah. So Will's over there. You go over here. So. Just take, and I think the reason they want to will over there is because of the American brewing. So, hundred percent. I mean, the other way around. Doing fantastic. Very yeah. cool. Well, I've got to sample a couple. Will's got yeah. me a couple of them. They're good stuff he over there. So, yeah, he knows very me. good. Well, awesome. Well, you're, um, you guys, Line Creek Brewing, Peachtree City. Yes, sir. Now, there's not a lot in Peachtree City. You're really on the south side at all right now. So, why did you decide on that location, and, and kind of what do you bring into the area? Yeah, well, I've uh, lived in Peachtree City last 13, 14 years, and certainly I've, I've seen it. Um, explode and get better last five years i mean five years ago you couldn't you know you find a chain restaurant and that's about as good as you're going to do so last five years there's been some local establishments palmers beirut Jew south um, some some good restaurants that have really taken off and uh, a first for craft beer that, that is, is really evident taco mac is always exploding every night of the week and for me personally i've been a big fan of craft beer you know since my early 20s in college well, excellent. Now, my question is though: Are you going to have golf cart parking at your uh, restaurant, at your brewery too? Right. Or is it like a no. drive-through golf cart thing? Is that is that how it works? So uh, have you been? Have see, you been for those recently? who don't get the yeah. inside yeah. joke, there, Peachtree <laughs> City has the golf paths. A lot of golf cart traffic in Peachtree yeah, City. Exactly. So, yeah, yeah. I, I used to work in Peachtree yeah. City, and I used to love the golf cart paths. Anyway, that's yeah, that was what right. I remember. I, 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 I thought honestly, someone was putting my leg. You know, when Paul said, you know, oh, there's, there's, there's like 100 miles of golf cart track here. I mean, there's no way. It's that, like, okay. Really, All right. Yeah. Jason no, got a little stuck the other day in the snow, but we won't talk about that. You see? Right. Yeah. yeah. It happens. Absolutely. It happens. Definitely. Now, uh, you're from England, yes, correct? Sir. So uh, the styles, big difference, I guess. Uh, England, I've been told, I haven't been there, but they're starting to make a little transition to more crafty styles. But, you know, pub L's, cask L's and that. Like the cask L tasting today, uh, do your taste run more? classic english or modern american you know my my adult life i've spent in america so i've kind uh-huh. of gravitated towards the, more of the american craft scene but i do have that kind of passion and that thirst for you know car style beers i think jason's seen the ex- explosion in the uk and ireland in the last five years so maybe he could speak better to that okay. will you be bringing some of those styles to lime creek uh, along yeah, those well, lines okay for sure there's going to be some traditional styles that are going to be you know to, to the style guidelines per se but you know 
just the same as every other brewery you know in the world they want to differentiate and differentiate themselves from, from other breweries so that's, yeah. that's what we're going to look to do as well we're going to have uh, a drop down cask system in, inside the brewery as well um, but for the most part we're going to be as adventurous as, as, as possible. Okay. Yeah. Now, now, one of the things we've noticed, too, uh, with a couple of Georgia breweries here, they've started to brew some uh, pub-style ales, uh, some low ABV, mm-hmm. kind of malty. Uh, you know, the uh, the Bestie Pub Ale from Wild Heaven is a good example. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, a few ESPs that are here, a few milds. Yeah. Um, is that something that you really are really looking forward to? Because it, they're, they're good drinking beers. 100%. Easy drinking stuff, too. Yeah, I, I think... I, I, I kind of come from, I suppose, kind of low to mid ABV background, per se, you could say. Um, so, yeah, I think... For me, I'd like to bring in, you know, your 4.7 to kind of 5.5 would be kind of in your in your under session kind of mm-hmm. um, area. But like we are 100% going to venture into your six plus seven, eight, nine, you know, all the ways up. It encourages people to drink a little bit more as opposed to having the big, huge barrel aged. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know. <laughs> I mean, there, there's a time and a place for all these styles, sure. you know. Yeah. Sure. So I think we want to. Or expose yourself to the market as much as possible. Definitely. Definitely. Now, Paul, you mentioned talking to Peachtree City, and this is something we, you know, we talk about a good bit about these towns that, you know, Atlanta's Atlanta's the hotbed. You know, the craft scene is booming here. Athens has a good scene, but as we step out and we fill in these gaps on the map, some of these smaller towns, they really feel there's a lot of education to the community on craft styles and that. Mm-hmm. But you mentioned in Peachtree City, there is already a shift towards more craft beer and and Taco Mac. You know. A lot of the geekier folks now kind of uh, talk poorly on Taco Mac, but there's a lot, a lot of people that have been introduced to craft beer Absolutely. sitting at a Taco Mac going through the menu of 200 offerings there. So, uh, you know, seeing that, is that uh, kind of where the, the community is at this point, kind of the exploratory discovery? I think, you know, from, from our initial launch maybe two months ago on Facebook, social media, we've had an overwhelming response, and you can tell people... You know, there are folks that are looking for kind of everyday session beers and folks that want to you know, drink your Belgian doubles. So, I mean, there's a variety of people down there. Petrie City is a very transient town in itself. You know, you get a lot of Delta community down there. Right. So they okay. travel the country. They fly around. They see these great breweries and come back, and they're looking for something in their hometown. Yeah, and we talk a lot about uh, the Delta community because, again, that's huge in Petrie City. Uh, one of our, our friends, too, Reformation Brewing, uh, one of the owners is a Delta Pilot, and he actually got into craft beer by going to – Johannesburg, he'd, he'd do the Joburg flights. He'd pick up craft beer there and come back here. Back. And actually, it was working. Germany and Belgium. Oh, it was Germany and Belgium. Okay, he's doing the Joburg route now. I got gotcha. you. Originally started in, in yeah. uh, Euro- European. But but being yeah. an adult apply flying overseas, that's a good way to get that's into it. some different Absolutely. styles of beer. Yeah. Yes. it's a bit of an yes. extreme yes. way, but uh, hey, whatever. It yeah, takes, right. right. You can whatever it, it takes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now to to talk a little bit about the actual brewery. What kind of setup are you going to have there? The size of your brew house, tap room, and that? Yeah, so we're, we're going um, specific mechanical. Um, we're running with a three vessel system. So we've got a mash vessel, lot of ton, kettle slash whirlpool. Um, and the beauty about that system is that it allows us to do multiple uh, brews per day. So hopefully, when we get the scale up, eventually that you know we can actually meet that demand immediately. Um, so right off the bat, we have um, four thirty barrel FEs with our uni tanks. Uh, we've got three sixties and two sixty uh, breaks. And we've been working with uh, Glenn Sprouse. You guys may be familiar with Glenn. I was kind of, with, I believe, five seasons back in the day at Sweetwater. He's now our technical consultant. So, oh, man, okay. oh, man, he's been such a big help to us. That is absolutely awesome. Yeah, awesome. he's been really helpful. Now, I've seen some of the videos on Facebook. I believe you were actually warned about spending time with me on, on a Facebook post. <laughs> <laughs> Look out. Or was, that, or was that you they were talking to there? I think that might be a statement. We make it through here. We'll make it through. <laughs> but uh, seeing some of the videos and layout for our listeners, what is going to be kind of the look and feel of your tap room? What can people expect when they visit? Yeah, so, you know, we don't want to do any t- anything too extreme. You know, we're going to have a 2,000 square foot tap room, which is going to have that kind of rustic, uh, vintage industrial feel per se. Uh, we're also going to have an events room there that the local community can rent out, whether it be for a wedding or a corporate function. Uh, we also may throw some beer yoga in there. Tim, are you a beer yoga fan? Right. Uh, what's that? Are you a beer yoga fan? I mean, uh, you can come down for some a beer, beer yoga. yoga. I do yoga. that. Actually, that's the way I start my uh, my day every day yeah. is a <laughs> 750 of a big stout yep. and some yogas. Absolutely. And mm-hmm. what's your timeline right now when are you guys looking to open up? We, you know, a blanket term, like Jason says, June 1st, late spring, we're shooting for right okay. now. We can't see any reasons for that to be uh, thrown off. I mean, the state licenses, of, of course, course, are uh, you know, one yeah. of the things we've got to work through. But thankfully, uh, Taylor Harper, one of the top alcohol licensing attorneys in the state, has been really, really helpful. So we're, we're glad to be working with him. Taylor's a good guy. We've, we've uh, had him on talk to him. He's yes. helped a lot of good people. And not just breweries themselves, but the laws in general to make things friendlier here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A, Fortunately, we have not needed the services just yet. So, yes. But, the, the, you know, the day just is still young. So. He is a Georgia beer hero. Exactly. So, absolutely. Exactly. So, guys, 
if people want to find out more about Lion Creek Brewing, what's the best way for them to do that? Yes, we've got the, the website, lionecreekbrewing.com. Um, so we're on Facebook, Instagram. Um, and we haven't got any dabble in Twitter just yet, but we'll be on that pretty soon. As well. Awesome. Guys, thanks so much for joining us. We're thanks talking to Lion Creek Brewing Company. You're listening to Beer Guys Radio. We need to take a quick break, but we'll be back right after this. Cheers, boys. Darren and Tim, the beer guys. If you're like us, no lunch or dinner is complete without a pint or two of craft beer. Which is why Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock and Alpharetta are always on our list. Tim, why do they call it Truck and Tap? Well, the tap part is easy, Aaron. See, they've got 18 of them. As for the truck part, well, that's when it gets interesting. Truck and Tap features your favorite Atlanta area food trucks daily, so that way you're getting a different menu every day. Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock, Alpharetta, and coming soon to Duluth in 2018. Truckandtap.com. Let them know that the beer guys sent you. the beer guys on facebook twitter and instagram Cannibal. Cannibal coming. now back to the beer guys radio show and welcome back to beer guys radio beer guys radio.com is our website and we are live at the atlanta cask ale tasting at five seasons west side in atlanta and we're talking today with several different breweries that are in planning almost a tradition for us Tim. it is a tradition running on our second year so i guess that's enough to make it a tradition oh sure why not second so, annual there you go we are talking right now to Ben Halter and Jay Young, and they're with Split Batch Brewing Company. And uh, you guys are looking around Johns Creek, is that right? Actually, um, more like the uh, Duluth Swanee area. West, okay, West even Nevada. better. Yep. Right, I'm yeah, a Gwinnett County resident, so I'm very happy about that. The more the breweries, woods. the better. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Well, the first thing I want to do is complain and gripe. So, Jay, Whatever, I think Tim. it was two or three years ago, you took best of show at Swanee with a triple berry Berliner, right? You That's put correct. that in yep. fruit beer, didn't you? Yes, sir. Because you forced me into second place in the fruit beer category oh, no. with your triple berry that. Berliner, man. So that was it. Yeah, get no. a little bit closer to the mic, actually. Okay, yeah. Sorry but about I, that. I did a peach saison and put it in there, and uh, I I saw that. I'm like, man, second, because I I thought my beer was it was I thought mine was the best of show beer, but. When I did see you got best of show, I'm like, okay, at least it was that good. So, well, so thank that's you. it. So we'll. <laughs> Well, I'll, I'll let it pass so this time. Yeah, I don't hold grudges or anything. No, it's I mean, okay. it's not like this was three years ago. Yeah. So, no, exactly. But, uh, and I didn't right. get a chance to try I can tell one. you've moved on. Yes, yeah. yes, I have, absolutely. <laughs> but really, that being said, yeah. both of you guys have been quite successful in the homebrew circuit, homebrew competitions. Ben, I know, you've, uh, I know I've, I've been at competitions where you just stack medals on medals for your IPAs and different beers. And, mm-hmm. and Jay, so uh, you guys are making the move, making the jump here and uh, starting a brewery, correct? That is correct. Uh, been a long time coming, kind of to your point. Right. Uh, you keep on thinking about it as you keep on doing better and better, and people show interest when we've done collaborations. So you finally get to the point where you're ready to make that bold move. Yeah, it's because it is a big step. I mean, oh, you yeah. know, there's a huge difference between brewing the nice batches and having fun home brewing, and then stepping into that. But uh, you know, so the name I did want to talk about split batch brewing, and I think I see where the the meaning of this comes from. But kind of tell us a little bit what's behind the name. Um, well, a lot of that does harken back to our home brewing days, which I know a lot of breweries end up having names that call back to kind of their origins. When I got into judging beers, I became really passionate about the base style and understanding and making sure that was well represented in beers. But then we started to be able to brew in larger volumes, and so it started to split batches. I hear this isn't great for trademarking, so don't do this. Don't okay. do as I said. Okay. Okay. But yeah. anyway... Um, so a lot of the styles that we did best, we started doing a lot of different variations on them, and that's where the name Split Batch came from. I mean, um, you know, you talked about doing a peach saison. I've done my saison like five different ways. Right. A lot of people have had my IPA either with Belgian yeast or with mango or with grapefruit. or I mean, and obviously it's popular in the marketplace too. But for us, it harkened back to how we got to first trying to play with all those specialty ingredients. Right. And you, there's really... You can get wildly different beers by taking the same wort and then doing changes with it. You know, one of the simplest ones is just pitching a different yeast. Right. You know, get you a clean, uh, you know, California L versus an English and make you a hoppy beer and see the difference in the hop profiles and all that. So there's really, so you can educate people a lot with split batch beers in how much versatility or how many changes you can make with simple changes there. Well, and then for me as well, I like to drink a lot of classic style beers and i do like the big flavorful stuff as well 
to be able to have those on at the same time or out in the marketplace together, you have the right beer for the right, either if it's a meal or if you're with friends, sure. whatever it might be. Right, absolutely. Yeah, something with a little lower ABV for the meal. and then But before, while you're grilling, you may want something a little bit more like bigger of an IPA or something like very that. Very drinkable styles. And but very even drinkable. beyond that, I've had some lower ABV beers with all the ingredients nowadays that are going into sure. that lose some of that drinkability. Um, so that's definitely something that I really want to hold on to. Cool. Now, where are you guys uh, standing in the process of uh, opening up your own space? Uh, you said looking at locations and uh, doing all that fun stuff. We, we keep looking at locations because, obviously, that's where the dream is, right? Sure. Um, the part that's been arduous for us is working through the SBA loan process. Gotcha. And that's kind of where we're, we've gotten very like very far with it, but it becomes very difficult to get, to get very defined with a timeline until you get over that big hurdle, right? Sure. So, luckily, to your point, Gwinnett, City of Duluth has been really good and very helpful with us. Some of our other friends in the area have as well. So that's helping build up the profile as we get to the finishing end of this. I mean, we're literally in the credit approval stage of all of this. Did your decision to move over to, like, the Duluth area, that's because I have a note here that says Johns Creek, and I don't know if that's just our mistake or maybe you were looking at that at some time. But did you, was your decision based on the way uh, Duluth worked with breweries? Because we're seeing that with a lot of people. We so I, a lot of credit goes to Jay here because he lives in Gwinnett County. And before even Duluth was known for that, I would say you were looking at Suwannee and Duluth as our two key yeah. areas all along. Such a large county and no breweries. I mean, at right. the time we were sure. looking at this. Yeah, yeah not the same way. Unbelievable. Yeah, I live in Lawrenceville, and just for years I'm like, yeah. we need a brewery, and there's nothing. And then finally, you know, we had Slowpore open in Lawrenceville. We've got Good Word now. You know, hopefully you guys coming online. Truck and Tap is coming to, mm-hmm. to Duluth as well. So we're starting to finally get a craft beer implant, implant uh, in, in the county. So. Well, that's the idea. Have a, make, make it a destination, right? Yeah. You know, and Atlanta is interesting, and I don't know if this is going on in the rest of the country. I haven't checked it out much, but our sub, smaller suburban towns, there, there's really really a revitalization of the downtown Main Streetish type of areas. And I mean, Duluth, ten years ago, you didn't go to you didn't go to downtown Duluth yeah. or anything. You didn't yeah, go that's over absolutely there, right? And I followed you know, so, all that, you know, yeah. hanging out in that area and living up there for a while. Yeah, yeah. Watching Swanee grow up and watching Duluth grow up, and I think that speaks to the overall. It ties in with craft beer, how we're talking people want that local feel. You know, people want the hometown, the main street. They want their neighborhood brewery in the community. So yep. it's, yeah, absolutely. Now, looking at your uh, brewery, have you have you started looking at your brew houses, what size you want to be, kind of how you're structuring there? Yep, we've had that finalized for a little while here. Um, you know, we're looking at around a 15-barrel um, system and three vessels. Yep. Very cool. Yeah, so that's right. Well, so yeah, so uh, so that's going to allow you to, again to do some uh, some possible local distribution as well, or you want to mostly maintain your your taproom presence. Most definitely a distribution uh, presence. In okay. fact, we've had to modify our business plan um, here this at the end of this year, so that we could adjust for the greater taproom sales because we'd already moved pretty far along with this process um, before the Georgia laws changed. So we already had to be thinking about a lot of distribution beer. Yeah, I think what it's great what's going on with the laws. But we already started down that path, and that's why we're looking at the size we're looking at. But but do the laws now that now they've changed give you a little more flexibility in that business plan? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. I mean, in fact, the revisions uh, to what it means in year one, which is really important, sure. um, are dramatic because you can start doing some sales out of your tap room and really recoup some of that startup that's so difficult um, sure. to overcome in year one. Yeah, that's. I mean, if you have to... You know, buy or get a rental agreement for all these kegs and equipment and bottling and packaging. It's capital. You know, I mean, we've seen it. We've been here long enough. All of us have been in Georgia to see how some of these breweries really spent years trying to recoup that. You know, so I know you said you had to do a lot of work, rework the business plan in it, but I bet, I bet you weren't too too upset about having to work that into the program, right? No, I mean, obviously, it proved it, it's making it a, a, a realistic dream. So yeah, that's awesome. Now, now, what are you guys looking for as far as like the size? And maybe the vibe, personality of your tap. Uh, we, we've actually had a kind of a similar uh, thought on the theme of the tap room even before the laws changed. And that goes back to the beer judging and the beer culture place that kind of we both came out of. While we don't have the specific size because we've got two different properties that we're holding on to mm-hmm. that we have to see which one falls when sure. all this is done. Not having that big like cattle call style arrangement is important to me. I mean, when I got out of the University of Georgia and moved to Decatur where we first met, the brick store, and you guys have heard this from a million people, had a huge impact on me. Sure. Not that I want to rip off the brick store, but put that as like your mind print of 
it needs to be beer first and everything else. Now, we noticed Brian actually doing a little research on you guys last night found uh, in Untapped there was a few barley wines listed in that. So, And I know, Ben, we talked about you've done IPAs and the, the Berliner and that. So uh, what are we going to see from you guys? Is there going to be a, a theme or a focus? Are you going to be the barley wine brewery? If the market will buy enough. Okay. All right. I certainly love the barley wine, and that's kind of like the running joke with me. So, and, and the reason you saw so many barley wines is that's what I've done the most of outside of IPAs. I, I'll buy all of your barley wines. I'll be all set. And also, <laughs> getting back to the tap room sales, barley wine's the perfect beer to have available for to go sales. It sits well. It that's true. Well. Right. And accepts a lot of nice right. treatments to it. Too. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Great. Well, Ben Halter, Jay Young, founders of uh, Split Batch Brewing. Hopefully coming soon to uh, Duluth, Gwinnett. Thanks for joining us on the Beer Guys Radio Show. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you guys for having Thanks us. Thanks so much guys. Thank you. Excellent. We'll be back right after this. Craft beer forged with a reverence for tradition and new styles that start a revolution. Ironmonger Brewing. The brewers at Ironmonger pride themselves in being masters of barrel-aged, hoppy, and sour beers. They invite you to their tap room to taste and see. And coming soon, Ironmonger's Barrel Room featuring live entertainment. Keep up to date on all things Ironmonger by liking them on Facebook. Ironmonger Brewing, establishing a new standard in craft beer. Follow the Beer Guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. What in tarnation? Now, back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. And welcome back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. Follow us on the socials, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Beer Guys Radio. We are broadcasting from the Atlanta Cascale Tasting today at Five Seasons West Side, and we're talking to some of Georgia's upcoming breweries, Aaron. Absolutely, yes. And so, you know, it's kind of a tradition. It's the second year of us doing it, so I guess we can call it a tradition. That's close enough. Why not? Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. So, uh, right now, here in our last segment, we have got to none other than Tim Shivani. He is the head brewer and director of brewery operations at Banyan Roots Brewing. Again, a brewery planning on Atlanta's west side. So, thanks for How's joining going, us. guys? Thank you. No, I appreciate good, it. Good. Appreciate it. Yeah, so uh, so we're excited. We're looking forward to uh, to get, seeing what you guys, what you have on offer. What's uh, what's going on with uh, Stan, uh, Banyan Roots right now? Well, we were, of course, standing pitch at one point, but Sorry. now we are. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, you're fine. Okay. You're fine. You're fine. No, that's, that's the fun part of the brewing industry is exactly. trying to get open. Yeah. Um, so we are right now just waiting for our application from the city of Atlanta to start, uh, you know, to get our permits to start building. Uh, you have to go through kind of a little bit of, a, of a, a hurdle to get your SAP approved and then get your permit approved, you know. So we're doing the best we can with an expediter to try to get some early demo going, but we're hopefully trying to break ground by February. It's just... It's been a long process. Working you know. on it, huh? Yeah. Working. Yeah, you know, learning. I'm learning a lot yeah. very quickly. Now, you guys have a pretty sweet location there. That uh, when yeah, you get open, right. you've got uh, one good neighbor there now. And others okay. coming in and that. Yeah. So, <laughs> But you're going to be in the uh, Lee and White development, which sure. is uh, on the west side of Atlanta. Yes. And uh, Monday Night's Garage yeah, has recently opened there. already a fantastic Wild place. Heaven is coming. Banyan Roots is going to complete the trifecta. And ASW Distillery and as well, ASW too. ASW Distillery yep. over there. So, uh, and there's also Golda Kombucha. Uh, right. Melanie that's head of that project has been her neighbor okay. and an awesome very person. Cool. That, that place is very exciting. Right now, it's hard to get in some promise, but in a couple of years right now, it's just very exciting to see what it gets to, and you know, being a part of that is really great. Now, do, when you guys chose that location, were the were the other tenants in there? Did you know that, or was this just a happy accident? Uh, it's funny that you say that. There's also a kind of a... Sh- sort of game you kind okay. of have to do. Yeah, you yeah. Know, we were kind of aware, but we weren't able to actually admit that yet right. because of all the, you know, I guess, uh, you know, when it comes down Let to Let people it. tell their own stories kind of. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And if people have some things that need to keep that are actually being paid to keep quiet, you know, you have to do your best uh, despite all the rumors to, you know, make sure you're, you know, you watching gotta, what you, you say. Watch what you nice. say. Exactly. That's yeah. it. But, you Absolutely. know, uh, once we figured out, uh, once it was, you know, great that it was Monday night, you know, uh, Monday night kind of took the whole anchor brewery of that area, you know. Uh, which is great for them. They've had, you know, their uh, support throughout this industry since they, you know, were making beer uh, back a couple years ago. And so it's great because they're a awesome, fantastic brewery. All the beer they've been coming out with now lately is great. And it's good because they kind of are the ones that kind of see who's coming into this, you know, uh, I guess project area of theirs, you know, and they kind of have a first right of refusal. But it's, you know, it's fantastic because, you know, we're all being able to sit there as neighbors and work together something great. You know, Wild Heaven, Money Night, and myself, it's it's true blessing. I'm very excited to see what all three of us can do together. Very cool. Now, did the location and the neighbors affect 
your business plan any as to how you want to kind of deploy your beer? Uh, not necessarily. Uh, I will say that, you know, all three of us definitely have something uh, that we offer. That it's not just, you know, your average ABC brewery, brew pub, or whatever. You know, there's Monday night, and they have their second loc- or their first location. And this is a little bit more of their, you know, sour barrel-aged project, which is really great. Wild Heaven is trying to make their Avondale location much more of their barrel-aged uh, facility. Right. So this would be much mm-hmm. more of the production. And then you have us as Bandon Roots as a brew pub as well, because we're going to be a full restaurant and full bar. So okay. I think it's actually, you even though some people can kind of get a little bit worried that there's three breweries next to each other we all actually have something to offer us so i think it's gonna be something very special now are you are you going to uh be a true brew pub or are you playing the new laws and uh be a production brewery with a restaurant um there is a fine line that we like to flirt <laughs> sure, with. Let's just yeah. go ahead and say that and, that, and you, know, you know for those that may not be familiar with the georgia laws some of the benefit if you go as a brew pub you would be able to serve uh, your beer food liquor wine other beers and stuff in there uh, so there's that, but you're limited on the amount you can actually distribute outside of the brew pub. For sure, right? yeah. And some areas, lo- lo- uh, local municipalities can actually, you know, it, when you do distribute, if you are selling cans out the door, some areas, like I know Nick up at Cherry Street, if they actually sell beer in cans, that counts as off-premise sales. Some places count okay. as off-premise sales. I could be uh, incorrect about that. Okay. Uh, please excuse me yes. if I'm... depends. Right. We are not lawyers here on the Beer Guys. Radio. But the flip <laughs> side of that is if you were a production brewery with a restaurant you would have a lot more uh, growth potential as far as distribution goes. Oh, fair enough. Uh, but limitations but, on, like, the kitchen size and right. stuff like that, which is okay. one thing that we wanted to kind of, uh, you know, I, I've worked in restaurants my whole life, and, you know, I definitely think that um, food is a great ac- accommodation to, to craft beer, sure. you know. And I didn't think we wanted to sell ourselves short by being able to have limitations as a production brewery with our kitchen. You know, Corey Burke, our chef, has a lot of great ideas, and together as a team, I know we're going to have something very special. You know. cool. Now, speaking of, uh, you mentioned you've worked in the food industry and that you've done some brewing. You've been at some of the very cool and popular spots in Atlanta. So what's your it's brewing background, city. Tim? Uh, what, are you, what are you bringing over there to Banyan Roots? Um, so I started uh, home brewing back in 2008. Um, and then with Neil Engelman, uh, who we both went to high school with. He's the brewmaster at Wrecking Bar. A uh, fantastic person. Him and I started home brewing together. And an opportunity just came after the opportunity. We started working at Wrecking Bar once they were hiring a new brewer. And then I met John Roberts, and that's when I got a little bit more of a lager brewing experience, you know. Right. Um, I do know that some people get a little bit excited and uh, how many different craft beers are out. This, you know, but home brewers always wanted to start with uh, a, uh, you know, vanilla smoked porter on cherry yeah. wood, and it's just like whoa, 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 whoa. Try the why are you first. looking at me? Yeah. 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 Try, you know, and that's one thing that I've really uh, uh, taken from John Roberts. He's, you know, a fantastic person. Great to have him as my mentor, but you know, it's just start with good beer first. And I got in traditional lager brewing, and. Um, at that point, you know, um, was able to uh, exceed as a brewer well beyond my expectations, thanks to John. And, you know, that, that's what we want to do at Banyan. Don't get me wrong, hazy, juicy IPAs are, are what's important. But to me, uh, you know, if I go into a new brewery in a new city, the first thing I want to try is their, their, their Pilsner or a Belgian beer, some of these really classic styles that uh, in, in some ways are kind of being forgotten. Yeah, sure. But, you know, and but in the same respect, I think we're seeing them come back a little bit more, which too. Which is great. Yeah, we're I mean, I'm the only one that, that's aware. That, 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 <laughs> sure, absolutely. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's something that... I, I think, you know, it, it's like those awkward teenage years. You know, you find yourself. <laughs> and, and beer geeks, seriously, we're, yeah. we're, I'm not talking to you specifically, but definitely you specifically, you know. But then <laughs> outside of that, beer geeks in general or yeah. the beer community in general is still kind of young when you think of the grand scheme of things well, of here course, in America. Because, so. you know, the thing is, is people, you know, just like uh, any of your Anheuser-Busch or large uh, macro-produced products, you know, you, any brewer cannot frown on the fact of how much quality they have and money into being able sure. to do that. Yeah. And so, then, so don't get me wrong, you know, IPAs have a very uh, large degree of freedom in which you can kind of fool around. But with uh, classic German IP, or sorry, IPAs, classic German Pilsners and Belgian beer, you know, you it's it's not only the ingredients you use, but the process of brewing, which is a little bit more uh, detrimental to the style of beer. You know, right. so, so for instance, anybody can make a really good IPA. You just dry hop the living crap out of it, right? But a classic, true German Pilsner has many flaws that any great brewer. Or um, you know, trained palate can sit there and work backwards, sit there and say, "This is where you're having issues." And you there's, yeah, there's nowhere to hide really on that. Nowhere habit. to hide, yeah. exactly. You, you know, you I mean, just can't throw it in a barrel or again. Or add habaneros and, and cover yeah, up your. Yeah. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> it's, it's, a, your it's a hoppy <laughs> habanero pilsner yes, now, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. So, Tim, uh, when people come uh, visit Banyan Roots, uh, what can they expect? Kind of what's going to be the vibe there? Uh, uh, 
I don't think people are really going to uh, understand, or uh, you know, I think we're going to blow their expectations out okay. of the water because don't get me wrong, you know, um, not a lot of people know Corey at our chef and partner, but he's also in charge of the uh, the bar program as well too. So don't get me wrong, you know, if you bring you know your friends, your family that aren't really necessarily beer drinkers, we're going to have something there for you, especially with food. You know, one of Corey's most successful drinks is pineapple drink, which we will be pitting out an entire pineapple for you and filling it up with cranberry soda, apple juice, pine juice, and a crap ton of liquor. Done. And the there thing is go. with Lee and White, which is really great, is there's an open container law. Yeah, so right. our goal is to have people come over, get them drunk off of beer and liquor, and then send them over to Monday night. Because, I mean, there's a, there's a really nice open courtyard area there. Exactly. Kind of and it, it just speaks, so. uh, speaks uh, beer festival it or does. some sort of festival. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know. Now, Tim, if people want to keep up with what's going on with Banyan Roots, what's coming in the future, what's the best way for them to do that? Um, un- unfortunately, we're having some uh, delays we're not really uh, able to talk about right now. Uh, and it's kind of, you know, um, uh, making our uh, social media hang by a thread, okay. you know. Um, but by all means, I'm, a, I'm a, a big social media presence. You know, I'm always open to people. You know, if they have any questions, you know, I'm, I'm all, uh, uh, all ears, you know. But uh, until it's time for us to, uh, to promote our social media, that's so the, the scoop is hang tight. Answer. We'll tell you more soon, right? Yeah, unfortunately, right, I, I hate that that's where we are right now. But you know, uh, it is yeah. what it is. That's okay. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Whoever said uh, open up your business is fun uh, was uh, well. Uh, well, you know, <laughs> last year we were three for three for opening up breweries when we interviewed uh, them on the yes. on, yeah. Uh, yeah. at ACAT. Yeah. So, so hopefully, you know that that trend will continue with you guys for sure. Also. Yeah, I mean, it, it you know it's happening. How fast we wanted to happen is you know. But at this point, you know, we're about to break ground. Good things are happening. It's just a matter of how and when. There you go. Tim Shivani, thanks good. so much for uh, joining us today. Appreciate Thank you, guys. Y'all have a great festival. Cheers. Cheers. Thank, Cheers you much. Thank you. So now we've got a giveaway to give away, We Tim. do have it, and we're a little different this week, Aaron. No real uh, hot list of news because we, we spend our time talking to people, talking to awesome people. But exactly. We are going to do a giveaway, and our winner this week is, I have it here, it is Brent Catalano. There you go. Brent, thanks for subscribing to This Week in George Beer. Congratulations on the win. Drop us an email to beerguys at beerguysradio.com so we can get you a swag pack sent out. And, Aaron, if folks want to join in the fun, maybe win some cool swag, what is the best way for them to do that? Just head to beerguysradio.com. Sign up for This Week in Georgia Beer. You'll get a weekly newsletter with all the happenings in Georgia Beer, and you'll also be entered to win our weekly swag pack. Coming up next week, we'll be talking to Sean O'Keefe and the rest of the crew from Pontoon Brewing, one of the newer breweries opening in Sandy Springs. But in the meantime, check us out at beerguysradio.com and on the socials. Don't forget, drink local. Cheers. We are Reformation Brewery, celebrating the reformer in you. Locally crafted within the renowned Etowa watershed of Woodstock, Georgia, Reformation creates yeast-forward brews full of aroma and flavor crafted to last. Come see us in beautiful Woodstock, Georgia, for a tour and tasting of unique brews that you can't find anywhere else. Reformation Brewery. Set beer free. ReformationBrewery.com. 